Tell us about your legislative district. Spans from uh, the, the southwest corner of the state, Long Beach, um, and goes all the way out to the Longview Kelso um, uh, area. And as far north as about Chehalis and, uh, and has a, quite a bit of Aberdeen uh, in it as well. So it's a, it's a large area. What, uh, what are your legislative priorities? Our district is very rural. And so um, giving a, a voice for rural Washingtonians is a, is a big part of my, um, is a big part of my agenda. I, as we have a lot of farming, a lot of fishing, and, and forestry work that uh, goes on in our, uh, in our district. It's important that we protect those jobs and, uh, and allow our citizens to have access to those, uh, those things that their parents and grandparents have had access to um, for these many decades. Uh, you also had some legislation focused on uh, title only bills. Tell us about that. I wanted my first, uh, my first bill that I dropped to be uh, something that said something about me and my, my ideals towards government and, and the relationship of government and citizens. Um, uh, most people don't know exactly what title only bills are. Um, and so if I could give just a very brief description and say why I'm against them, it's, uh, there's a process in which uh, bills are created and they're voted on in committee and from committee, they go on to the House floor and they're then voted on and then the Senate and the, and the governor, et cetera. Well, somewhere along the, the way, um, there are multiple times where you can add amendments to these, uh, these bills, changes that change the bill. Well, I, wanna, I want you to imagine for a second that um, I had a bill and the bill was called Feed the Hungry Children Bill. Um, and it sounds very nice. And then if you looked at the bill, what if there was no text on the bill? And someone said, are you gonna support my bill? And you said, well, there's no text on it. They said, don't worry, we're gonna amend it later and we're gonna add the language later. Or imagine that there was language on it and it sounded good, but then later on down the road, all the language was scrubbed and something new was put on that had nothing to do with feeding hungry children but you are on the record as being a supporter of feeding the hungry children bill. Um, this is what we call a title only bill in which you're voting on the title and not the text in it and that the text is gonna be drastically changed. Um, this, is a, this is a loophole in policy that uh, members of both parties have used um, to try and get legislation through without public scrutiny. If the public is allowed to read the text of a bill, they're gonna be able to have some say as it works its way through the process. But, what this does, what title only legislation does is it keeps the public blind so that the actual text of the bill comes at the 11th hour when the public has no, no say and it's passed. And uh, it's something that I find that's against, uh, it's, it's against the, the, the Republic. It's against a good, uh, good order. It's, uh, it's, not a, it's not a good habit for a government to be getting in that uh, has made it's, uh, it's paramount uh, focus on transparency before the public. And so for those reasons, uh, I'm against title only bills, also known as ghost bills or ghost legislation. And that's why I dropped the bill that I did. What has surprised you most about being a state representative? What surprised me most is how few minds can actually be changed. Um, the minds of, of legislators, you, you must understand that legislators are are natural leaders. Um, they, that's how they, they got here is that they have their mind made up on a lot of things and they tend to be older in age. And when someone is past their mid twenties, they don't see a lot of ideological shifts anymore. They're pretty much well set. And when, a, when an election is over, the people who have been elected are there for their two year terms. And, um, and so it becomes extremely difficult. And I didn't think it would be this difficult. And this is what has surprised me is that I thought that if you made a good floor speech and made good points that people on the other side would nod their heads and say, oh, that's a really good point. Yeah, I think I'm gonna vote for that. No, they will not. They will not vote for that. Um, it doesn't matter if you make the best point in the world. It doesn't matter if you have a Winston Churchill speech in your pocket or if you have a secret weapon, you've got, uh, you've got documents that show that you're right and the other side is wrong. It does not matter. Um, the, the parties conglomerate, they unify and they vote the way they're going to vote. But one thing I, I do appreciate about my side is that they do, they have put an emphasis on us voting our conscience and our district and giving us the liberality to vote in a way that, that, um, that suits our conscience. I, I do appreciate that. That's not always the, 
the best strategic way to legislate because we know that sometimes there's there is virtue in unity of a party. But um, we are we are encouraged by our leadership to to vote our conscience, and I I do appreciate that. So that's that also surprised me as I thought I was going to get I thought I would get uh, hamstringed into voting for things that I was just ideologically opposed. And I thought I'd feel this great pressure on my shoulders that you know you must vote for this. If you don't, we're going to make life hard for you. That no, that has not happened to me. Um, not even close. Not in fact, it's the other way. I'm like, shouldn't we all unify? And they're like, no, you vote. You vote the way your district and your constituents would have you vote, and I'm, wow, that's very, uh, that's very interesting. I did not expect that. So there've been a few surprises like that. What is your take on the remote legislative session? I've kind of had mixed feelings on this. I've made the best of it. Uh, for example, my commute times have really gone down, um, being that I'm working in my home office, um, uh, a few feet away from <laughs> where I sleep. So it's, uh, it's. Um, I've made the I've made the best of it. Um, I believe in that. I I'm just as new at this virtual stuff as all of the senior legislators around me, and so all the years of experience that they have built up, um, they have had to kind of start over, if you will. And it has put me on more of a level playing field where when I don't know what's going on, I'm looking around. Well, neither does anybody else. No one else knows how to do this either. Um, and I do think that in it has gone smoother than I thought it would. I, I thought I thought there would be much more technical hiccups. And yes, we've had our glitches. We've had our our hot mic moments. We've had interesting things happen with the technology. Everyone's on mute. Um, however, um, that being said, um, I, I think it's uh, it hasn't been as nearly devastating to the to the legislative process as I thought it as I thought it would be. I think everyone has. Um, um, been very flexible. They've moved their office spaces. They've done what they can to get fast internet to be able to participate adequately in the process. It's it hasn't been equally easy on everybody, but but uh, but I've been surprised at how how well it's gone thus far. And what is the best way for people to contact you and be involved in the legislative process? I have found that there's some great um, resources out there for people to stay stay up to date on what's going on. Um, and uh, part of my job, I feel, is to inform the public as well as be informed by the public. I invite people to share with me their insights and uh, what, they, what they feel about policy. But I also feel like I should be a sounding horn for policy that I'm aware of that maybe the public isn't. And so a couple of things I've asked people to do is go to uh, TVW to watch some of these hearings. I know it's not super exciting. I know it's not Netflix worthy. However, um, there, there are, uh, there are advantages to being uh, in the know with what's happening in these committees and on the House floor. Also, uh, going to uh, ledge.wa.gov and seeing what is on the agenda for these committees, um, I, I think is something that will really benefit the public. And want to contact me? Um, a, a really great way to do that is uh, through my legislative email. Um, we pretty much have a uniform legislative email set up, and that is our first name dot last name. So Joel dot McIntyre at ledge dot dot gov, and ledge is L E G. And so that's my official uh, email. My uh, legislative assistant, who who helps me through this process, um, is very good at uh, getting me your email so I can respond to constituents uh, personally. Um, so I've, I've, I use my weekends in, in total to, uh, to take the week's worth of emails uh, that have come from citizens in my district that have heartfelt concerns, and I send a heartfelt um, response to them, and that's something I've, I've done and I'll continue to do.